Calm down, ladies and gentlemen. It's called being fashionably late. Yes. It's not like Bitcoin's doing anything now. Let's be honest. Like, there ain't nothing happening. We've got more entertainment in the chat regarding gap fillers than we have with Bitcoin itself. It's FOMO starting to come in. Why hasn't Bitcoin moved? And why tomorrow is a very important day for Bitcoin? Historically, what happens in the stock market and sometimes, well, predominantly in the Forex market is Friday is usually a day for them to either run for profit or start building bases or preparing price for the better word for the next coming week. Remember, market makers, hedge fund managers, mutual funds, you name it, pensions, they are all subject to quotas. They've got to make money and they have to prepare their positions so that one week they're accumulating, the next week they're distributing. And that's the way the game rolls. But Bitcoin is stuck in the psychological ranges, guys. And tonight I'm going to break it down for you so that you are fully aware of what to anticipate when price does actually hold inside of these ranges. Historically, it's consistent with accumulation because Bitcoin's not gone down and it hasn't gone up. But we have to look at what it's done and we can only make the assumption that there is more anticipated flavor to the upside. So I'm going to try and keep this live short and sweet for you all and give you a reasonable amount of information in a reasonable amount of time. I'm not going to read the chat tonight, no, because I'm going to read the wrong comment and it's going to start this whole story again. The joke's done. It's not, but it kind of is. Now, if you are new passing through, make sure you like the stream as always. And of course, make sure you subscribe on the way out if you liked tonight's flavor and you want to tune into it a little bit more. Hit the bell button as well so you don't miss out on potential gap filling plays. And I'm talking about in the stock market because we're going to make reference to NVIDIA very shortly regarding a gap that they've actually filled and made some more gains on. All right. Gaps in the charts. All right. We need to get this guy banned. Like he needs to stop saying this gap story. Stop it. No, I'm not having it. There is, look, too many innuendos regarding gaps. It has to stop. I will not read the chat, please. Come on. Call it something else. You know what the correct term is? Windows. We should call them windows. Windows of opportunity that open wide. <laughs> JP Morgan right? Traders see NVIDIA as a catalyst to revive the stock rally. But at the same token, JP Morgan says that Bitcoin ETF price flow correlation is declining. So what is it with JP Morgan, man? One minute they're like, yes, Bitcoin to the moon. And, you know, you've got Mr. Dimon saying, oh, I can't stand Bitcoin. And if I was in power, Bitcoin would not exist. And of course, if you guys know who Dan Pena is, you know, the trillion dollar man, he was like, Bitcoin to zero. And he kept it very quiet about who the creator of Bitcoin was. And he was saying, I know who the creator is. And if I tell you who it is, you will run to sell it. All right. Comes out and says that it's Putin. OK, cool. So and it's Putin's way of actually sticking it to the West by getting everybody to get involved in it and then pulling the rug. That's what he says. Well, Bitcoin is kind of struggling right now to get to zero. And all of the stuff that's coming out regarding Bitcoin right now, it's like, you'd be stupid to not buy it. You'd be stupid to sell it. Okay. If you don't hold Bitcoin, whatever amount it is, it's like it's frowned upon. And that's how you know they got people trapped. But don't get it twisted. Bitcoin is a very good asset. And if we can exploit that, and make money from it, happy days. And I'm more inclined to get involved in it. Now, this article here talking about a correlation between Bitcoin's price and the ETF. Well, this is what was naturally going to happen. But be careful. Because Bitcoin hasn't moved, they've come out with it saying that there's not that much of a correlation or it's starting to slow down, suggesting no interest. No, it's because Bitcoin hasn't moved. So that means the ETF hasn't really moved. But we understand it to be accumulation. Look, they are still buying this ETF. So who's been who's been buying? Here we go. Well, actually, 
not who's been buying, who's been selling. So we've seen, wow, okay, Fidelity has been selling. Um, Fidelity again has been selling. They sold $31 million worth of Bitcoin. And then they sold another 50, 83, 54, 87. Okay, then. So Fidelity seems to be taking potentially some profits, which you would only assume that was going to be the case anyway. Because if we actually go into Bitcoin's, the actual ETF itself, you can see that it's, it's come down. And we said this would happen. It would start off with hype. It would come straight back down. And then it would start to climb up. I will stand and say it again. $60 for the ETF. You heard it here. That's my price projection, okay? Because if Bitcoin's going to get parabolic and start going crazy, then logic would say that this holding of price, and we go into Bitcoin's price right now, we can safely assume that they are doing some very interesting numbers behind the scenes. Some are selling, some are buying, but we do have a couple of points of interest. And one being the psychological range, which is what I want to talk to you about. If you go back and if you haven't got the hybrid system already, go and download it. You can go to tradersreality.com, okay, and just click the info tab at the top right here and then make your way through the steps here. You can join the Discord itself right there, okay, and you can get the hybrid system indicator free of charge by just clicking here and it will take you straight through to TradingView. Make sure you favorite it so that it comes up in your list and then add it to your chart on trading view. Happy days. Now here are a couple of other things, the volume bars, the vector candle zones, and the MT4 sessions, higher time frame candles, which means that if you're on the one minute time frame and you want to know what the one hour time frame candle is doing, rather than changing the chart to the one hour time frame, you have the actual one hour time frame candle on the one minute time frame. A very effective way of understanding the bigger picture when you're only looking to scalp in certain time frames, okay? And then, of course, you've got Bookmap right there, which is bookmap.com, okay? But go and do that if you are completely new to the hybrid system. And then, of course, go and take this free course, right? The free course itself just breaks it all. No, not this one. It's this one here. Here we go. So the free course right there talks you through the whole thing on how to understand the patterns, the moving averages, and then, of course, the psychological levels, all right? Let's kill this. Okay, then. So what is it about this zone that we really need to take into consideration? It takes the first high and the first low, okay? Now, these are two important points at the start of a trading week. That's what we need to understand. The logic says that when we see a move away from the psychological high and it keeps on moving away from it, logic says that it would come back down towards it. Now, the best thing about this is you can actually go back and look at historical psychological levels and you can try and make sense of this, okay? Historically, what we know is they move away from the psychological range, they come back into the range, and then they move away from it. We've got this one right here. Same behavior, which is what I think is going to happen tomorrow. Either tomorrow or going into the weekend. We are going to see what would look like this behavior, because if you notice... This actually started on the Wednesday. The move happened on Wednesday to the upside, okay? But they had consolidated price from the Saturday into the Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and then they shifted, okay? They also did the same thing here. But they did move away from the psychological ranges, but they came back into the low, and then they came straight back up again. So we did see a little bit of volatility, but this is what I'm looking for. You can tell where you're going to be with Bitcoin if it doesn't barely move away from the psychological range. Like this, it moved away from it at the start of the week, Monday. Tuesday, they're preparing price, W formation, shift out, and by Friday, they are back to the psychological range, okay? That's what we're looking for over here, guys, okay? We're looking for the same behavior right here, all right? Can you please check gap fill USDT? Bro, man, come on. I'll look at Philcoin. No gaps. I'm going to tell you about one of my dates I went on one time, but it's not for tonight. No, that'll be for tomorrow. Okay, then. <laughs> what a date. Anyways. So why do we need to focus on why the next day or two is going to be monumental for Bitcoin? 
because then it will highlight to us if they are getting ready to, or should I say, have they actually trapped enough traders? Because the game is psychological, simple as. The game is psychological, right? Up here, we have a red vector candle. Cool. Down here, we don't really have any vectors for them to come back into other than this blue vector zone right here. Looking left, you can see they've got this big area of imbalance, which they've tested several times and they've aggressively moved away from. We go and have a look at the orders from Bitcoin and you can see they narrowly came towards that big order that we were looking for. That 34 million, where is it? There you go, 31 million and 47, right there. 466 Bitcoin orders, 23 million at 50,750. They tried to gun for it today, but they didn't succeed at it. But the bids have effectively started to come back in inside of this zone. So we can naturally assume that if you look at this, look at this cluster of bids, the green represents the bids, okay? Look at how many of them are picking up orders inside this area. And then there is a release. Now they've come back into this area and we can see that the same thing is sort of developing here. Okay. Why is gapped in America? <sighs> Please, guys, use your super chats to ask good questions, man. Not why is gapped in America trending. Speaking of which, let me just show you something, guys. This is absolutely hilarious in reference to the U.S. stock market, right? We're going to look at the coins. And what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to dive into a couple of coins and just look at some of the statistics behind them, like Render Token and Fetch AI to show you where investors' heads are at and why these all-time highs that are nearly appearing on these coins are really, you know, it's time for you to start taking some money off the table because by the principle of Bitcoin, if the dominance is coming down, altcoins should be making a move. Now, we know that the altcoin market itself is still hot toying inside of this area, but it looks like it's preparing to make a move. So we could actually have a little bit of a spring altcoin, okay? It's spring for the altcoins. It ain't seasonal yet. It's not hit that mode just yet. But looking at the way the Bitcoin dominance is playing out, you can see it's just been stuck and playing inside of this zone. And the logic says that, if they're going to bring, if the dominance is going to continue to drop, we could assume that altcoins are going to have a nice little run and the dominance is going to come down to around 52%, which would then lead a lot of altcoins. And you can see bright as day. Look, Jasmine for the once is actually correcting and pulling back, but it's holding out pretty well. And of course, Matic, hey, <laughs> they hit that point. Happy days. Those who know, know. But look, HBAR, like we, we got the flavor with these coins, man. Look at this, man. It's just not stopping. So, Guys, if you are in these positions, please take them, okay? No, I ain't saying that, bro. I'm not saying that. <laughs> Anyways, going back to what I was talking about, I think this is hilarious. And this can relate to a lot of people in cryptocurrency. Watch this. Stock market explained in 10 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> it's very true man literally that is what happens this guy's got it down to a t there you go that's what's going on on twitter right now but this has caught my attention wouldn't be surprised if reddit supporting and buying bitcoin could start the retail fomo mohegan bitcoin okay so right everybody knows what the story is with wall street bets okay these guys, they, they ripped it with um, GameStop and hold on. I'm tired, Tina. I'm tired of these gap jokes. I have a serious question and you, sir, can only answer the question. Are you the muff? Bro, what are you asking me, man? Am I the muffin man? No, I'm not the muffin man. Man, I'm trying to do something here, guys. Mike, I seriously think we should ban the chat. <laughs> nah, I'm not going to do that. Okay, then let's just get back into the flavor of what we're doing. I'm losing my trail of thought this evening, guys, okay? Um, let me tell you about how my day's been. So I did some trading today, okay? And I, well, let me just get the image up for you so you can see because I can't, you can't see it from there. Okay, then. So this is for anybody that's with funded accounts and what have you. So my day today ended up with on four accounts that I traded um, performance accounts. 
Um, we come out with just shy of around, how much was it? Four, yeah, $4,257 after commissions and what have you, okay? This one up here is just one of the challenges that I'm currently in the process of passing very shortly, just another 7.5K, and we've hit the, the profit. And we've got... Um, Took a loss on one of my performance accounts, $800. Um, we've effectively done well with these three accounts right here. So that's happy days. But in the background, you can see that I've also, and I'll show you this. So I've had this account for quite some time. And you can see that I opened this account back in October, October the 16th last year, right? And I completely forgot about it. I literally forgot about it. I took one trade and made, what, four, what was it, $95, and then I just left it. Little did I know I was paying for this account. So I was like, oh, my God, I better start trading it. So I took the trade two days ago, okay? So, and this is what you've got to be careful of with funded accounts. Be very careful with it. Apex, which is where I do my, most of my trading and where all my funded accounts are, if you pass the challenge in one instance, you pass it. There's no... Best day, okay? Now, what is that? It's the consistency target. So you need to establish consistency with Top Step Trader, okay? Whereas with Apex, once you're funded, that's when you need to start showing consistency. But when you're trying to pass a challenge with Apex, if you pass the challenge in five minutes, you pass the challenge in five minutes. That's it, okay? And they award you like that. But with Top Step, they're a little bit more meticulous with it. So what had happened to me here was in my, one of my trades came in and I hit the target straight away, okay? And it went in, here we go. So from there, from 150,000, I went all the way up to the target, which was 9,223. They then messaged me back and they said that in order for you to pass the challenge, you need to make another $9,185 to pass it. So I was like, okay, then let's do that then. So the next day I took a trade and we made 3,917. And then today we finalized it with 4,162, thus completing the challenge. And now we've got ourselves another 150Ks worth of funding. Because you're looking at that thinking 9K was the target. Why on earth have I got 167,000? So 17,000 more. That's because Top Step want you to consistently be taking trades and show consistency. I just happen to grab the moves. And that's the thing. That's why I'm with Apex, because I can grab a move and effectively exploit it. And the move that I was trading today, guys, was this. It was on the S&P. I was trading the all-time highs on the S&P, right? And it was in this area here. So what I was looking for was the S&P was showing consistency to every time it marked up. They kept on bringing price back down again. But I kept on seeing on the offers over here. So we were inside of this range right here, okay? And I was paying attention thinking, okay, up here, they did not have this, all right? This was before it took the 5,000 mark or 5,100 mark, not 5,100. It was the 5,000, where's the opening range? Here we go. So we were effectively here during the New York session, right? And there was none of this to the upside, all right? This is new because they started to keep moving price higher and higher. And what I was looking for, if you can see, these are the orders here. So these are the sellers, these are the buyers, but they're aggressive buyers and sellers. But behind those are orders for people who are passive buyers and passive sellers. And what I kept on noticing was the S&P kept on marking up, but every time they tried to pull back, I noticed from the depth of market that every time someone tried to sell aggressively, there was a bid that came in to hold price and push it back up. So this continuous ebb and flow of price bouncing up and down led me to believe that they're going to keep on gunning for the highs and go for the all-time highs. So that's where I was able to exploit that today, pass the challenge, make a bit of cash, just off the idea of what was going on here, because at the all-time highs, you don't have vector candles. However, with that being said, we go into the actual S&P itself, just to put, the, put it into perspective. It was this area right here, okay? That's what I was, not, not this area. It was this area right here, just before they made the run-up, okay? But looking left, I was like, no, it was here. That's it. It was in the evening. No, where was it? Yes, it was inside of this area here. That was it, about four o'clock when I started the trading. That's correct. But on the one-minute time frame, okay? And we were trading this. And this is important for those of you who are trading altcoins. Take this information 
Because if you're trading altcoins, this same thing applies. Look at this. You see these zones? These zones right here are critically important when there is all-time highs coming into play. Okay? Now, understanding these orders right here is going to help you understand if there is intention to mark prices higher. The same for Bitcoin, the same for Euro, same for Ethereum. The hybrid system operates across everything, okay? Stocks is a little bit tricky. Why? Because stocks don't trade all the time, okay? There's always a cutoff point, but they do trade well inside of the New York hours. So just take that into consideration, okay? But notice how red vector candle, one, two, three, they stabilize price, green vector candle, stopping volume, green vector comes into play, they come down, red vector candle, you're only expecting recoveries of the candlesticks, taking trades inside of these zones, they pump price up, happy days. Blue vectors always are consistent with reversal points, the blue vector comes into play and there is a little stopping volume candle right there. And then they mark price back down again. You're only preparing yourself to trade back into the vector candle zone. I'm looking at these gap talks, man. Oh, my God. What are you saying? Can you look at No Sana and explain how you evaluate what level a coin is when it's in areas where it hasn't been before? Hard for me to know the level. Jesus Skywalker, this is for you, okay? But I'll look at that. What's the ticker for No Sana? Um, forgive me. And so, so this is what I look at, okay? If you notice... Behind every red vector candle that appears, and this is going into all-time highs, they're coming down, but they're not breaking down. They're using the 50 EMA, and this is where I'm looking at the depth of market on this chart right here, where I'm paying attention to the orders. Because if the offers are coming in, but they keep on minusing the offers, that means they're pulling off the order book. It means they want to try and offer up higher. The bids are going to naturally going to hit the offers and lift price, Okay. And that's what I'm looking for with this in this, okay? I see a red vector candle and I think, okay, because this thing's trending upwards and we've got good news across the board. I mean, come on, NVIDIA's just been smashing it. It's just adding another 277 billion on value. Like, wow. I'm only going to be trading with that logic in the back of my mind. So it's continuing up. Again, what have we got? Another zone right here. Happy days, okay? Look again what happened here. Red vector candle, but they aggressively come back down. They recovered this red vector, came up, recovered this vector, came up back into that vector, then finalized with that vector, and then they finalized it right here. But look at the time that we're trading. When it's busy and moving, you get this consistency, okay? When it's coming towards the end of the market, you can see what's going on. This is perfect for anyone that's trading altcoins that may be going to all-time highs. So well, let's just look at Fetch, just to put things into perspective, okay? Um, what we got? Blockchain. Thank you. Ishoki, man. Thank you for doing that, bro. Thank you, man. Mad love to you. Okay. Does she still like me if the gap has no... That gap story's for you guys, man. Anyways, fetch AI. Okay. See, cryptocurrency's a little bit temperamental, of course. All right. But look, you've got the same principle here. So there is a bigger gap right there, big red vector candle, okay? So if you were going to trade it off that principle, you would be anticipating by the principle of the block that they're going to try and come back up into this point, okay? You do not take any longs unless you are given conviction to believe that that is the case, okay? Now, how do you know that at this point right here, they're going to come back up? We well, have to look out and say, okay, we've tried that high once, failed. We've tried it again and failed. And there's a big markup to sell price. So they marked it down lower. The retrace right here, you, you could have said to yourself, I'm going to take a trade on that logic. But you would have been stopped out if you kept just exit very tight. And then they marked down. Look at how they continue to drop price. Now, you could have looked at this and said, I'm going to go short, which you may have been successful with it. But what you want to look for is the ability of price to hold so that you can then come with a judgment and say, I believe it's going to start working its way up. So what do we look for? We look for the first green vector candle that can break above the 50 EMA. Now, this is on the one minute time frame. You're going to see green vectors all the time. So we use the one minute time frame and say, let me see a cluster of vectors building up in a specific time zone. What we got here. All right, then Arctic Fox. I'm going to check that out. Arctic, a protocol, a lower 14 cents a week ago, now 90. Okay, I'm going to check that out for you, okay? So here it is right there. Look, there is your cluster of vectors, okay? 
Now you look left and say, I've got this vector candle zone right here. And they've tried to go up to it, pulled back, but they haven't broken down W formation. That's what the W does for you. So even if you were to try and trade back into this logic, you would say to yourself, I want to see a W formation. That means if you were going to use this point right here as a W formation, what would you be looking for? Green and blue vector candles or the first green vector candle above the 50 EMA. If you don't see it, you don't take it. You wait, comes down, comes down. And then what happens? New York steps in. There we go. A bag of vectors. They come back up and fill the gap from the... From um, the, the 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 move to the red vector candle. Oh, God, I can't even say it anymore. <sighs> Does that answer your question? Jesus um, Skywalker, have you, have you commented what the actual ticker is? Nasana, is it? Is that it? I'm guessing. Is, is, this, is this your coin? Um... Yeah, it's a bit of a tricky one, this one is. I'll be straight with you. It's not, it doesn't trade really smoothly. Well, it does, to be fair, but it's very choppy, okay? When you see choppiness like this, just, well, it's pretty much copying Bitcoin at the psychological level. So, yeah, um, your question is, can you look at the sign and explain how you can evaluate when a coin is when it's in an area where it hasn't been before? Hard for me to know the level. Here we go. Let me just make sure. Okay. Render token. Let's now make the assumption that render token is working up. This is for the guys wanting to trade altcoins making highs. Trade. Okay. That means you have a short term period or short term tolerance of being inside or being in the trade. Okay. You go to the five minute time frame. Price is pulling back. If they're in the mood to be marking price high, and I'll stick with me on this one, and if you are new to the channel, okay, just bear with me on this one, okay? If, if you're seeing a coin that's trying to make highs, or it has been making highs, and you can see the sequence of price moving up, coming down, moving up, coming down, okay? Each time they make a high, there's a garnering, they're, they're garnering interest, okay? And remember, we are the people that are going to be buying when price drops and selling when pr price rises, okay? But retail is buying at these highs because they feel like they're missing out, okay? Now, what you want to be doing is when you see this sort of structure like now, okay, you need to mark off the blocks and only mark off the significant blocks that are on the five-minute time frame. So in this instance, you've got this green vector candle zone right here, Okay. We're now waiting to see if this green vector candle zone is going to be a point of support. Right now, it's breaking it, okay? So now we want to wait and see if it can actually hold this point. Logic would say that if it can sustain this area, then give it room to bounce to the 200 EMA and then potentially try and work its way back up again from this point. That's one point right here, okay? Now, if it does fail that point, we've got another point where historically the market like to sell from, which will be this violet vector candle zone right here. So now you've got another zone that you want to pay attention to and say to yourself, right, if we're operating at all-time highs or we, we have the assumption that it could actually go towards the all-time highs again, then we can say to ourselves, well, I will give this a chance to work its way back down into this point because if they start to sell off from this area where they aggressively got engaged to mark prices down from this point, I'm going to assume that if I start seeing green vector candles appearing in here and price is holding, I'm good to take longs inside of this area. However, we are at the range daily high for this asset. So it's taken, it's gone beyond its average daily range and hit the range daily high. It's consistent with pulling back right now. So when the new day starts, the range daily high and low are going to reset. But it's good to have that historically in the back of your mind. Now, the fundamental purpose of me marking off these blocks right here is to get you to think about how price may have behaved in the past. Everyone's using the past. Look, they use this. They use a rainbow to establish whether Bitcoin's going to go up or down. Yes, it's a logarithmic growth curve. I get it. But they're using a rainbow and it says maximum bubble territory. Sell, seriously sell. FOMO intensifies. Is this a bubble? And fire sale, buy, accumulate. That's the only decent word up there that can make reference to somewhat investing. Accumulate. 
and with the exception of Bitcoin price, okay? But what we're doing here is we're taking that understanding by the principle of blocks and making the assumption that historically the market does repeat itself. So if they are trying to mark price up from this point, I'm going to want to see the same behavior here so that I can improve my probability of seeing a successful move to the upside from this point. And if I don't get the confirmation of green and, vector, red, uh, green and blue vector candles, then I don't take the trade. I now have another zone that I can work on. That way you're in tune with the chart because you know at some point in the chart, they're going to bounce up again. If you look right and you do this, where on earth did that be? If we look, <laughs> uh, if we look right, yeah, I'm talking hindsight, okay? But I do this every day for the guys who are platinum members, okay? We did it today. We do it every single day. Asian session, it seems to love it, okay? Green vector candle block, look right. Green vectors appearing inside of the block. Markets' memories getting triggered. They want to mark prices higher, all-time high, principally. Off it goes. That's what you're looking for. Okay? I hope that answers your question, man. I hope it does. Um, okay, so I'm up 2,500% on render token. What should I do? Uh, well, I've... Okay, for you, I'm going to look at um, AIT protocol now. Um, if you're two and a half thousand percent up on render token, okay, go and fill your wife's gap, take your money and enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> so bad. Okay. Um, I'm guessing this is it. AIT, okay. Is this the coin? Lower 14, no, it's not. What's the coin? AIT protocol. Can you please tell me if I'm typing the right ticker here? AIT protocol. Is it this one? There we go. Happy days. All right, then, cool. So it went from 14 cents all the way up to 90 cents. Okay, cool. All right, so this is where we are. Again, we're stuck inside the psychological ranges. Quite a choppy asset, okay? Very difficult to try and gauge the vector candles because they are consistently appearing. I mean, you've got um, green vectors there. Ugh. Well, no, they are consistent. Let's be honest. They are, kind of, yeah, they are consistent amongst themselves, but it's all over the place. Stuck inside the psychological range. Um, it's trading sideways, all right? So I'd be paying attention to it. I really would, especially at 79 cents. Just keep an eye out on this and mark these two zones off, okay? Mark off the 85 cent zone and mark off the 66 cent zone, okay? We can go into tomorrow, we go into next week. If they can clear the 86, 85 cent zone, Bitcoin dominance coming down, Bitcoin holding out, you're going to assume that they're going to start putting their money in and it's going to start marking higher. So just take that into consideration, okay? Um, how about GRT? Okay. All right. So <clears throat> what have we got here? Coming back into red vector candle zones. Okay. That's cool. Made a nice, got some beautiful curvature here. Again, look, what did we just say a few moments ago? Skywalker, what did we say a few moments ago about the collection of vector candles? Okay. Now that isn't at all time highs, but look. Red vector candle, okay? This is the 15-hour time frame. So anyone that's holding coins and wants to understand if they want to get involved in something, okay? Look at the clusters. There is a cluster of green vectors right there. Who on earth is stepping in at this point? If you were to even split the chart in half, okay? Count the vectors. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. How many are positive? How many are negative? In other words, red or violet, all right? Well, you can see that there's more negative candlesticks than there is positive. Okay, now let's just look right. What am I waiting for? Imagine this isn't existing. Imagine that wasn't there. As you're waiting, you want to see green vector candles because you've got your eye on this vector candle zone right here. You think it's going to go back to that at some point. And as you're waiting for price to come along, you see these green vectors appear and you're thinking, oh, okay, I've got some interest right now. It's doing very well. Okay, cool. First green vector candle above the 50 EMA. That would be this candlestick right here to be more conservative, wait for one like this. Because if you have one like this, it could lead to a bit of chop, which it did. 
But wait for one like this where it can clear the range. You take a few positions from there, ladies and gentlemen. You're trading to what? You're trading to one spot right here. Happy days. And then you're trading to another spot up there, which is what the goal was initially. And then look, it just completely flies and takes the range. Happy days. Okay? That's the 15-hour time frame. Okay? What else have we got? Let me have a look at what you guys are talking about. Harry Potter, thank you very much, man. I hope you guys are showing love to these people that are sending um, gifts, man. You know? It's really good. How many people are new to the live? I'd like to know. Please, get back into some BTC. How many of you are new to the live? I would like to know. Ten, no, ten new members. Happy days are the gifted ones. Happy days, welcome aboard. Okay. Um, Tino, check Cardano. Mm. This thing here. Do you know what? How many of you actually like XRP? And how many of you actually like ADA? Because XRP and ADA are always the ones that get the S. They always get the grief. And it's sad. Because these coins actually do, they, they provide a purpose. You know? Like, uh, yes, one, two, yes. I've watched you a few times, but just subscribe. Glenn, thank you very much. Glenn's watched me a few times and he has just subscribed. I, I hope I've earned the subscription. And to anybody new, please do subscribe so you can get more flavor like this. During the evenings, it's a little bit quiet. We're a little bit more reserved. Or are we? We have many innuendos in our chat for the new people passing through. They're not special people in the sense where why are they talking about this particular gap? They're the pattern watchers, man, you know? And when you subscribe, you become a patent watcher. So thank you very much if you are new and you are subscribing. And make sure you hit the bell, ding-a-ling-a-ling, -a -ling, so you get notified. How bad is that, man? So you get notified about the future live stream. How many of you do that? How many of you have a dialogue with yourself? I do. I'm always talking to myself. My God. <laughs> Houdini Trader, gifting five traders reality memberships yet again. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Ripple and crypto is a scam, Dan says, but XRP to $1,000. That is crypto 101. Right there. Ripple is a scam. <laughs> XRP to $1,000. That's, that's where it's at, ladies and gentlemen. That is exactly where it's at. Okay, then, cool. Ada, what have we got? Again, so now we've got the principle here. So all of you right now, go and get your altcoins. Go and have a look at your lists, okay? Pull up your lists and say to yourselves, all right, then, looking at where price is right now, split the chart in half. So wherever the candlestick is right now, you might think I'm crazy doing this, but there is a logic to it. If I can't simplify an approach to get you to understand it, I don't understand it myself, okay? But by doing this, you're encapsulating the logic of the hybrid system. Again, if you want to dive into it a bit more detail, go and take the free course. There's 20% off the free course. It's a free course. Take it. It gives you everything that I'm talking about right now and a few things inside of it as well. There are paid courses, but that's for convenience. Only take those courses if you are taking this course. It gives you everything that you need about the hybrid. So... All of you, mark off in your charts of your chosen altcoin and look on the one hour time frame and say to yourself, how many red vectors can I see from the peak? So we've got one, two, three, four red vector candles. Do I see more red vectors and violet vectors than I do green and blue? Well, yeah, I do see more red vectors, okay? So now if I believe they're going to come back up and trade back into this price point up here, OK, well, what do I need to see happening? Well, I need to see them trying to break this point right here. So what do I need to see inside of this zone? Ah, there's our little block. OK, then. All right, then, Tino. So by your logic of this block principle that you've come up with, what am I, what am I waiting for now? Well, if I'm going to be favoring longs on ADA, I want to see a green vector candle breaking this because I want to know if historically where they try to mark up price from here, if they do it again inside of this area with more green and blue vector candles, I'm going to have more confidence in taking a trade to ride up the move to the upside to come back into this imbalance over here. Simplify your trading. Know when to get out. You're going to place a stop, place it outside the structure. At least give it a chance to move. All of you do that. 
And if you start seeing more blue vectors and green vectors appearing here that are closing higher than each other, it's consistent with them getting ready to mark up. You can't really assume that now with ADA. Why? Because look, green vector candle here, blue vector candle, violet vector candle closing strongly against the green vector. Then you've got the blue vector here, but price has now come back down and recovered it. There's interest right now in that zone. The same applies for smaller time frames. You've just got to give it a little bit more freedom on the smaller time frame. Okay, then what else we got? Tino, love the stream. Adrian, what's happening, bro? Can you look at VXV daily and weekly? VXV? VXV. Are we VXV? This one. Vector space, huh? What is this? There is a vector coin. No way. I'm hoping this is the coin you're talking about, my friend. Okay. So 66 cents. What have we got? Here we go. Had you split it up in half. No vectors as such. Interest. People are buying it. Okay. Blue vector candle at the lows. Blue vector candle. Take your trade. Yippee-ki-yay. Bit of a bad example. But here we go. Look. Perfect example right there. Red vector candle, you're going to assume they're going to come back into that. Okay, then. Take your trade. Green vector candle appears, but it's, it's, you've got to know your asset at the same time. Look back. Look at how it behaves. Spike up, spike up, spike down, spike down. You're going to be getting the same sort of flavor with this. Okay? Um... <clears throat> Crypto psychic, psycho. He will get better. I'm sure of it. He's a tough guy. Hybrid wise, I hate asking questions. I just figure it out and work until it sticks to my brain so I can do it my way. Listen, you ask any question you want, bruv. All right. If I catch it, happy days. If I don't, don't take it the wrong way. But ask the question about the hybrid system. Just ask anything. Okay. What do you need to understand about it? I mean, Bitcoin ain't doing nothing. <clears throat> okay then, Dilberry, what's good? All right, check out Spell. Go, okay, yeah, I saw Spell, to be fair. Spell has done some very... Okay, so, perfect. All right, it is a bit of a cheap coin. Hmm. Mm. Okay. When you've got an altcoin like this, you're going to have to wait and play the patient game. So zoom in. Yes, we've had a nice significant move to the upside. Happy days. Profile your coin. Go back. What does it do? It makes a pump and it comes down. Then it starts again. Okay. Makes a pump, comes down, starts again. Makes a bigger pump. We'd assume that it's going to be a little bit more corrective to then try and go again, okay? We don't know indefinitely when price is going to move. I'm losing my voice. But we know the market repeats itself because human nature doesn't change, all right? Just purely for acknowledgement. Mr. Toe has asked how many gaps are filled tonight. Honestly, guys. It's rude. Here is a, a gap that has not been filled, but they ended up going. Thousand dollars. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. NVIDIA's going to pull the number for the stock market. And when we get, bear with me, core price index could pull the flavor, but it's when this guy talks, it's when Powell testifies that we're probably going to see an interesting move. And then, of course, when we go into where are we? The FOMC press conference, March 20th, ladies and gentlemen, my days. All right, listen, now I'm going to ask you, if you are new to the channel, make sure you have subscribed because this FOMC is the biggest live stream that this channel does when Mr. Powell talks about what the economy is going to do, okay? 
I would believe that if Bitcoin is going to start making a move, okay, it will make the move go and clear the all-time high because we're not far away from it. Come on, it is achievable. It will clear the all-time high before... I don't even know if I should say this. Do you know what? We're going to say it, okay? Because i got balls like that. <laughs> I think Bitcoin could hit the all-time high before FOMC. Who's with me on that? Who, who's with me? Who thinks Bitcoin can do 32%? from now until the 20th of March. Who's with me on it? I want to know. I want to know. Tino checks all. Okay. Well, hold on. <clears throat> yes, that's what I meant. Sorry. Who's with me on this logic? No. No. Okay. No way, man. Bold statement. Yes, so it means Matic is moving again higher in Asian session. Could be. I would like it to, but no. I'm with you. Okay, all right then. Poll. Here is the poll. ATH, all right? So we've got context to it all, all right? ATH, March 20th, or just simply no. All right, here we go. Do that. Here we go. I want to see it. Because let's just put the logic together right now for the people that are like, what's this guy talking about? FOMC, like, <laughs> March 20th, 32%. Is it possible Bitcoin could go 32% from now? Bitcoin's average monthly range, okay, will be resetting very soon. Okay, so we're on 22nd of February, okay? Average monthly range is 637,552 pips. That's the smallest change in price. So right now you can see Bitcoin at um, with the point after the decimal, 0, 09. If you go, there you go, 2973. Those changes in price are the smallest amount. Okay. So let's assume the high average monthly range for Bitcoin. If we just go by where price is right now, okay, I've done this before. High of the weekly range. Let's just go by the weekly range. Weekly range right there. So one week, two weeks, three weeks nearly. Yeah, just under three weeks that it maintains its average weekly range. That will get us towards 62. Okay, that's not bad before FOMC. And then FOMC comes along, Bitcoin sweeps the all time high and then comes back down again and consolidates. It only makes sense. Or Bitcoin could just trade sideways. That's the truth. But I think just looking at the way things are and these, these bizarre instances of Bitcoin just holding out. Okay, Bitcoin comes all the way down to 48,000. <laughs> That's just out the window. But something significant would have to happen. <clears throat> they must be buying the ETF. That's my logic here. Okay, miners seem to be calming down on the selling. Okay. So that means they could be accumulating, getting ready to pick up more. They may have sold enough of their supply and what have you. But that would be a bold statement. But enough people are in the belief that Bitcoin needs to drop. Okay. So I'm just going to have a look at it right now. Where are we at? Here we go. Yeah. They're, they're, and they're getting very heavy with it as well. So you've got quite a few guys on 50X trying to short Bitcoin. And this thing right here ain't working. What are you doing, bruv? What is wrong with you? At best of times, why aren't you working? Come on. Here we are. Look at that. Yeah, so look, the liquidity is picking up. They have look, between 54,250 and, of course, 52,150. There's a lot of shorts coming into play, and they seem to be holding out for these longs, which is consistent with V-shaped plays. Okay, and then going into this, we've got the flavor right there. Look, they come down, bid down and come straight back up. The bids are there, man. The bids are there. Okay, I think 60K before the halving. I know we've got the halving as well. Only a short amount of time before all the candy has been taken from the kids. That could be the case. That could be the case. Okay. 
Harmonics on the weekly. Okay. Guys, 604 likes and it's 1,551 of you. Yo, yo, you're liking these gap comments more than the stream. Come on, ladies and gentlemen. Where's the love? Let's get with the program. Jokes aside. Make sure you like the stream, guys. Let's, let's get our ratios working correctly. Okay. We've got a very interesting day tomorrow. Okay, then. Hmm. Finally. How do you distinguish? Great question. How do you distinguish between breakouts and stop runs? I always get caught out on the stop runs that I believe are breakouts, even after waiting for a confirmation candle. The time frame is very important as well. Okay. If you're looking for a breakout, for example, this was a breakout stop run. All right. But you can imagine right now people on Bitcoin, right? We, we, we look at this and we, the best way for you to take advantage of stop runs and try and capitalize on them. Okay. Is use the sessions. Okay. See the Asian session. They like to sweep that comes down. New York. They came back into the previous session, swept that, came down, okay? So we know that New York or Asia has pretty much set the high for the day, okay? When you're looking for breakouts and stop runs, do the opposite. If they tried it in the Asian session, they come down. Make the assumption that if they're going to try it again in the U.S. session, if they can't fail, if they can't clear the range, then you're probably more likely to see it reverse back down again. Stop runs are initially designed if liquidity is at the top here and price is all the way down here. The market in principle is going to collect its orders. Then it's going to say, hey, we've got flavor over here. Sweep up, bring it back down to do what? Repeat the same thing. Which is exactly what they did over here. This is where retail traders get caught out in the... Um, three hits, then go long. If it hits a trend line three times, then you're more than likely going to see the success of the move. Well, you got kind of screwed over there. They know how retail thinks, okay? <laughs> I ain't reading no more comments, man. <laughs> You guys are getting different now. <laughs> Listen, if you are new to the channel, once again, make sure you're liking the stream. Subscribe on the way out, guys, if you want to tune into more flavor like this. And then, of course, hit the bell so you do get notified about the next live stream itself. I go, I stream twice a day, 9 a.m. Eastern Standard, 2 p.m. UK time, and then 10 p.m. UK time, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard. And if you want to know the hybrid system, Get to tradersreality.com. Everything you need is right there, okay? Free course, take it. If you want to become a member, take advantage of daily setups, become a platinum or a gold member, and everything you need is in the description of the video, okay? And pinned to the top of the chat. It has been a pleasure with you all, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. Your poll has said that you do kind of believe it's going to happen by March 20th. I will leave you guys with that. Please trade safely and I'll check in with you in the morning. Peace.